Can you create your own nutrition label for a meat jerky business? Well, if you're looking to start a meat jerky business, I'm gonna show you how to create nutritional analysis labels. And I'm gonna do it right here on my laptop. I'm gonna walk you step by step on how this works. And we're gonna to get to that right now. All right, so how do you create a nutritional analysis label for your meat jerky business? So if you're looking to start a beef jerky, turkey jerky, or any type of jerky business, and you're gonna to wanna to have, a definitely have a nutritional analysis label on it. Now, is this something that you can do yourself? I'm actually gonna walk you through. I've got my laptop open here. I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process, and I even have my recipe to plug in all of the key ingredients to show you exactly how this works. So if you're looking to create a profitable uh, meat jerky business, you can definitely do that, of course. But if you're looking to create the nutritional analysis, instead of sending it out, you can actually create a data-driven nutrition analysis label. And we're gonna dive into that exactly how that works right now. So I'm looking, I've got my laptop open here. I'm gonna check out recipal.com is the recipe. By the way, I'll have some links for them down below. You can definitely check out their website. They're pretty cool. Uh, you, you actually can create all kinds of great nutritional analysis labels for your products. We use them in-house here for our facility. Uh, we print our own nutritional lab labels for our candies and baked goods and things of that sort. Uh, we've been using them for quite some time, but I had a question actually from one of our subscribers on how to create this because he was looking to start his own um, jerky business. And of course, keep in mind the one type of business that you can't do from home, you actually can't technically legally sell beef jerky or those types of jerkies from meat jerkies from home. You'd have to have a commercial kitchen, commercial license, and you gotta do it in an inspected facility and such. Uh, it's one of the things that cottage food laws, the laws that uh, dictate the different types of home-based food businesses, one of the things that you can't do in almost every state actually is uh, create jerky from home legally. So keep that in mind. You do wanna do it, do it the right way and of course do it legally. So that's a whole nother video. I'm gonna show you exactly how to create an amazing nutritional label though. So I've got my uh, ingredients here. Once you open up Recipal, you start off by typing in one of your main ingredients. Um, so this is gonna be eye round steak is what we're gonna use. And we had this earlier, I did a walkthrough, so I kind of sped up the process. And doo -doo 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 -doo, there it is, okay. And then we're gonna add that to it. Now first, what you wanna do is find your ingredient up here, okay? And then you wanna hit add to the ingredient down here. So you're gonna create the recipe first. Then we're gonna dive into the sizes, the weights and all that and break it down into packaging so you can do that and have it correctly set up for your packaging based on whatever size that you may have for your uh, recipe. So let's go ahead and uh, we got that added. So let's delete that out. Next up we have uh, dark brown sugar. Uh, dark brown sugar, let's see, there it is, all righty. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And you can see down here, it adds it down here on the bottom. And then we're gonna go through the specific units, the size, the weight, and all that good stuff, okay? All right, so the recipe calls for soy sauce. Now, of course, your, um, there it is. Your recipe may be slightly different. Um, of course, I'm doing this as an example. Make sure that you get the right type of ingredient that you have, of course, for yours. And each time you add it, it's gonna be right down here. All right, then we have Worcestershire. Always a funny word to say. There it is. Worcestershire and bingo. And we're gonna do paprika. Paprika, smoked paprika. Yes, there it is. And then we only got a couple more and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, meat tenderizer. Yes, actually McCormick's is the one that the recipe calls for. That's kind of funny. Okay. That will work. And we have that added, yes, down here. All right. This is super, very convenient. Um, it's great that the FDA actually allows two different types. Um, let's see, black pepper. Two different types of ways that you can actually do this, which is really great. Um, having data driven is simply using software instead of a computer program, which there's a handful of different websites that do this. I prefer Recipal because it's something I've become familiar with. It's very simple to use. You plug in the ingredients, you plug in your sizes, and you can create it very quickly. Um, red pepper flakes. The other way that they do it other than data-driven is gonna be a lab tested, which is extremely uh, expensive. <laughs> so crushed red peppers, yes, bingo. And then we have only one more item, and that's gonna be our onion powder. All right. Type in onion powder and then we're all set. And there you go. All right, so we have our ingredients for our jerky, our meat jerky. 
Now we have to, based upon the recipe, so let me show you real quick. So I've got the recipe here, right? So the recipe has a specific weight of the amount of meat, the size of, uh, of the amount of cups of soy sauce and all the dark brown sugars, etc. So now we're gonna plug that in. So up here we have one pound, so the recipe calls for three pounds. Dark brown sugar, we have one cup. So one ounce. We're gonna do soy sauce, this is also up. Worcestershire sauce. Now this is gonna create a marinade, as you may or may not know. So Worcestershire sauce is a favorite spoons. Actually no, it's five teaspoons. And then let me get this smoked paprika. In one second, I will go over what we had just talked about. Two of those. Black pepper is two tablespoons. And then crushed uh, is actually going to be three ounces. There we go. So three, four ounces. So it's going to be, we'll do four. It's actually one ounce, or one teaspoon of crushed pepper. And then you've got two tablespoons, two tablespoons of onion powder. Fantastic. Now that's all set. Let's scroll down here. So now we want to determine the net weight per package. So based upon the amount of meat that we have on here, this actually is going to create, we're going to do, we're going to create eight ounce packages. Now this is where it gets really important because based on how you are going to actually package yours, you need to make sure it's either four ounce, eight ounce, 12 ounce, one pound bag, whatever it is that you're going to sell. Normally beef jerky is not really sold in the stores by the one pound. I've seen a lot of 10 and 12 ounces and such, but 16 ounces is hard to find. Plus a lot of people don't buy that much, so they buy about the eight ounce, seven or 10 ounce. So that's gonna be dependent upon how much you wanna bag. So how many of these it's gonna create? It's going to make four packages. Serving size is gonna be two ounces. Each bag will weigh, the net weight per package is eight ounces. Actually, there we go, okay. And then how many servings per one? Okay, that's gonna create four. And there you go. And this is my meat jerky recipe. And it's going to be eight ounces. Okay, so we have our net weight, which is the net weight minus. We keep in mind too, that when you create a net weight, if this is new to you, do not add the weight of your packaging. So the bags, the bottles, the box, whatever it is that you're putting your food product in, do not add the weight of the package. They need to know the net weight. That's just the product by itself. And then this recipe, based upon the recipe, how many packages does the recipe make? The serving suggestions, that's something you can create yourself. So if you wanna do one ounce, if it's an eight ounce package and you wanna do eight servings, let's simply go to one ounce. What this will do too, is this will reduce over here. It's gonna reduce the calories and such as well. Okay, that'll go down. And then you have on here, as far as how many servings, they're gonna do eight because each of packages weigh eight ounces. Each suggested serving is one ounce, so obviously they're gonna get eight servings. And see how see all this goes down? Drops down tremendously. Okay, so let's go to set ingredients. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna take a look here and make sure all this is in right. Sauce, marrow, pepper. Yes, everything is present. So this is the ingredient statement preview. So this will be all of the list of ingredients of the product that you are actually making within it, okay? Now we want to view the nutritional label. And there you go. You're all set and you're all good to go. Now on the bottom here, I actually like to, if it's like uh, Damien's uh, Meat Jerky Company, I like to put allergen warning here. Made, let's see, made in a facility that handles soy, wheat, eggs, dairy, and tree nuts. Now, the one thing that's really important that you have to understand is here where it says allergens, you have to make sure that you are not clicking something that is in this, because let me show you how this actually pops up. If you type egg or fish or wheat or tree nuts, what it's gonna show is, is actually gonna show what it contains. Okay, this is gonna ask you then what type of a tree nut, well, cashews, almonds, etc. But it doesn't contain that, okay? It doesn't actually have that inside of it, it's not containing it. If you deal with these items, if you're in a facility in a commercial kitchen and there's trace elements of this, and there could be trace cross-contamination as it's known, where these, these types of things have been processed in the same, let's say you're renting a commercial kitchen. Obviously many of these things could be present there. 
So you're, you're going to add them as an allergen warning here that it's made in a facility that handles it. Your, your meat jerky doesn't have fish in it. Your meat jerky doesn't have egg in it, okay? You don't put tree nuts in it. So it doesn't necessarily contain that, okay? So you want to make sure that you have that straightened out. Also, this right here is going to be the, the tabular look, okay? They have a vertical one here too. Let me show you. If you want to do it this way, you can print it up that way. And you can actually download the label. We get to this section here about downloading the saving. Depending upon how you want that presence on your bag, you're going to get that PDF file. That image is going to be in that direction, okay? Up and down. It's going to be vertical. If you just simply want a tabular one, this is the one I use all the time. It's very easy to do. Now, when you're done, let me go ahead and take that off of there. Simply click the save PDF right here, and that downloads that PDF image onto your computer, and then all you simply do is print it out and put it on your label, obviously, your sticky label, which will go onto your packaging. Now, if you're having custom package made for your uh, meat jerky, you want to send this information to the company that's doing the printing of the bag or printing your custom printing of your packaging. That way they can put this information directly onto the package. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That is how you create a nutritional analysis label for meat jerky. Uh, the one thing you need to do though is you need to have a shelf life test done. That's going to give you a best buy date. This doesn't necessarily do that for you. This is a nutritional analysis. So you do have to have a shelf life test done so you can have an exact idea of what it's going to be as far as putting that best buy date on your packaging. So if you have any more questions about how to create a nutritional analysis label for your meat jerky business, let us know down below. Check out all the, uh, the great uh, resources I have also on our website. Tons more free re website uh, re resources for you guys. I'll see you guys on our next video.